God, it's been so long since I've done a video. I will be doing the Black Sabbath album ranking. I did it before, but at the time I did it before, I didn't have Headless Cross or Forbidden. Luckily, I was able to order both of them from the same seller on Discogs. <clears throat> and I'm glad to have them both. I'm glad I gave Headless Cross a second chance. Also, in the previous video, I fucked up on Seventh Star by stating that Tony Iommi did the vocals. Glenn Hughes did. You watch the No Stranger to Love video, it throws you off. And the fact that, oh, Seventh Star was supposed to be a Tony Iommi solo album. Whatever. <laughs> Let's get started. Mm. Oh, a bit close. Okay. Coming in at number 19, Never Say Die. And I don't hate this album. I don't hate the album cover. Love the title track. My intro to the title track was... And my intro to Black Sabbath was the Speak of the Devil album. Ozzy said, This is the last song I ever wrote with Black Sabbath. Never Say Die. So, I'll always love the title track. Johnny Blade isn't too bad. I know a lot of people like Junior's Eyes. And, I feel this album gets more hate than it really deserves. Sure, it's not the best, but but again, nothing wrong with Own and Never Say Die. Coming in at number 18, Headless Cross. First heard this album in 1996, 11th grade. And at that time, I didn't like the music. I've always liked the cover. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, look at the back. Great cover. Okay, and um, I have listened to this album again, and it's not too bad. 1996 and 97, they were rough years for me. Coming in at number 17, Cross Purposes. Remember in 1994... Here in Houston, Texas, we had a metal station, 106.9 Z-Rock. When they played Cardinal Sin, oh man, that was a great moment for me. All the songs on this album are heavy. <clears throat> Tony Martin really shined. Coming in at 16. Forbidden. I remember, I remember when this album came out in 1995. I would have bought it then, but I was short on money. And also, no one was saying good things about it. A friend told me that it sucked, but he was going into all progressive metal and stopped liking classic stuff. But anyhow, regardless, in 1995 it came out. Record stores had limited copies. And 
After 1995, you couldn't find it in a record store. Fast forward years later, I was able to listen to it on YouTube. So let's just say, A, I don't mind the cover. B, the first two tracks are killer. Ernie C and Ice T, they fucking made this album. As for anyone calling it Rap Sabbath, fuck that bullshit. Moving on to number 15, 13. This was going to be their second to last album, but they, just, they went on their final tour and <clears throat> decided this would be it. This album is best known for the title, tr top, the song, not the title track. There isn't one. This album is best known for the song, God is Dead. All right. Moving in at 14, The Eternal Idol. Remember uh, back in high school, my best friend got this album on tape or CD, and he brought it over, and we both loved it. 1987 has a killer 80s sound. And <clears throat> as for the album cover, that was a horror story that never should have been. This fucking camera. Okay, good. Now, a clear shot. Clear focus. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Number 13, Dehumanizer. Badass with Ronnie James Dio. Has the songs I and Letters from Earth. Dio played these live, those two songs live. I know he know he liked them. Also has Time Machine on it, which was in the movie Wayne's World. My favorite song, TV Crimes. And I think the album cover is okay. Oh, I can see that computer in the background. <clears throat> Okay, coming in at number 12, the most underrated album by Black Sabbath, Tear. Great album cover, great sound, and I hope they do a remastered deluxe edition of this album. I really think they should. It's got great sound. Okay. Number 11, Seventh Star, Glenn Hughes. And yeah, I read about the about his drunkenness on the tour and but I'd say this album is great. He did a great job with Black Sabbath. And the song No Stranger to Love. I can't see anyone, any metal fan at least, not loving that song. All right, coming in at number 10, Born Again. All right. Look at this album cover. This album cover says Black Sabbath, period. I heard the Cannibal Corpse cover of Zero the Hero when I was a kid, before, way before I heard the original. 
long before. Okay. I love every song on this album. Ian Gillen really shined. And I know people complain about the recording because when they recorded it, the sound quality was compromised. A lot of people say they should do a remastered deluxe edition, get the sound quality in check, and of course I fully agree. And... I'm waiting on the remastered deluxe edition like everyone else. Born Again, badass album from 1983. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to number nine. Number nine is four. Yes, volume four. As Tomorrow's Dream changes, dark songs like Under the Sun, and Snowblind is a big hit. This is a must own for every metalhead. Coming in at number eight, Master of Reality. And I know a lot of people put this one as their first. It has the hit song Sweet Leaf and Children of the Grave. And again, another must own for every metalhead. All right. Coming in at number seven, Technical Ecstasy. I know people knock the album cover. Um, I don't hate it, but nothing special. All right, can we get a close-up of the track list here? <sighs> Barely. Okay, there we go, there we go. Has heavy songs like Backstreet Kids and Rock and Roll Doctor. Really, I love every song on the album, but what really makes the album are the last two songs. She's Gone, which is dark and tragic, and Dirty Women. Huh. I'm sure there's no Black Sabbath band that doesn't like Dirty Women. <laughs> All right. Number six, Sabotage. Has a cute little album, co cute album cover. <laughs> okay, and it has the big hit, Hole in the Sky. And another big hit, Symptom of the Universe. Heavy badass song. And I love Megalomania, or however you pronounce that. Am I Going Insane Radio? Am I Going Insane is the song title. I don't know why radio is there in parentheses, but whatever. <laughs> Sabotage, great heavy album. Now, moving on to number five, Mob Rules, 1981 classic. Everyone knows about it. If you're just starting out in metal, 
Get this album. It's a must own. God damn it. My computer was going into hibernation mode. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now, moving in at number four, Heaven and Hell. And I have talked about this album so much over the years. 1995. My classmates listened to Stone Temple Pilots, Pearl Jam, Blind Melon, Collective Soul. No, not me. 1980 classic for me, Heaven and Hell. Everyone should own this. Everyone knows about, every metalhead knows about it. <clears throat> All right. Okay, moving in at number three, Paranoid. I remember when I was a kid, I first heard this song Electric Funeral on the radio. Really, I consider Ozzy No More Tears to be my official intro to Ozzy. So I was 12 at the time, but I, I heard Electric Funeral before that on the radio. Loved it. And of course... This album is known for the big hits, War Pigs, Paranoid, Iron Man. Every metal fan has heard Iron Man at least a million times. All right. Why the fuck did it look fuzzy? <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, the final two. Black Sabbath. Debut. Everyone is familiar with this album? And there's the age-old question. Where would we be? if this album had never been made? And the answer to that question is, we don't know, we don't want to know. Nobody will ever know the answer and we're glad we'll never know the answer. Oh yeah, and Black Sabbath did, Black Sabbath debut album <sighs> has one great fucking album cover. <laughs> Looks like a fucking jail in the background. Okay, coming in at number one, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. The title track is a hit with everybody national acrobat is a badass song every metal fan loves <clears throat> the song killing yourself to live got tipper gore's attention she considered it a song that promoted suicide the song, Who Are You? Fucking badass song. Yep, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. My favorite Sabbath album. All right. That concludes my 
Black Sabbath album ranking. <clears throat> okay. So now that I've redone Pantera and this ranking video, I want I need to redo Rainbow because I didn't have their 1995 album when I first did it. And I'm the completest type, especially when it comes to all-time legendary bands like Sabbath and Rainbow. Queen's right. Will I redo that one? I don't know. <clears throat> but that's it for now. As soon as I get a new job, I'll order the one rainbow album I need. And then I can do that video. I quit my job in November. All sorts of bullshit came up beyond my control. And uh, having so much time off, I was able to reorganize my office, go over my Discogs music collection, subtract a few things that were added as owned by mistake when they were wanted by me. And I was able to add some things that hadn't been added and make a lot of corrections so when you first start doing your music collection on discogs it's on the job learning now that i've done it right down to the matrix numbers i know exactly what i have and i'm grateful we have an online website where you can open an account and document your music collection. I would have killed for that back in the late 1990s. So, everyone, have a great day. Thank you for watching.